Hey folks, my name is Dave. Welcome back to the shop here at NTD Racing. I just got back. We were on a long road trip with the family, about 8,000 miles in the RV, and that was a total blast checking out national parks all over the West Coast. And we just got back also from my 50th birthday party in New Mexico with a whole bunch of friends. It's something we call the 5150 party. So today what we're doing is we're getting back to work on Lefty. We just finished the fabricating of the front engine mounts, and I'll be doing some welding on that today. And today what we're doing is we're making the indestructible transmission mount for the 6L90 transmission because we keep destroying those things. So we'll try to fix that in this episode. If you do like what you see here today, please consider hitting the like and subscribe, maybe ringing the bell for notification of future episodes. Let's go ahead and get to the fabricating on this transmission mount. Well, I think that the easiest way for me to describe what we're going to be doing with this transmission mount is to look at this one here on a stand as opposed to the one that's in the uh, in the cradle right now. But this is the transmission that we melted down at the Vegas Torino race. I think at about 270 degrees. This is the tail housing that we broke at the uh, Mint 400. Let me show you kind of what happened here. And this is why we're fixing this as you kind of see the bolts, there was a plate underneath here and the bolts ripped right out. And you can kind of see this hole here where this thing became a big transmission fluid sprinkler uh, out of that hole. So this is the part that we're gonna try to fix. And you can kind of see this tail housing just really, it just isn't that thick of a piece. The inside, it's just a casted piece of aluminum. It's just, I mean, it's good for probably taking all the loads that you would have in a truck you know, with big, nice suspension on a main road. But when we're beating it around, especially when we had a shock failure, it just wasn't strong enough to take the loads. So what I'm gonna try to do is see if I can't engage these three holes right here, the same size as these, uh, as far as bolts go. I'm gonna see if I engage these. So I'm gonna make a plate that goes across here and bends over. Now, I gotta clear this thing. I'm not super smart, I don't know what that thing is. But I gotta clear this thing. I gotta make sure I don't hit the, the pan down here on the bottom, so it can't be too big. So what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna go with a two inch square tube all the way across the bottom, and then a piece that kind of engages these bolts, bends, and then welds the bottom of that. So it'll basically be able to engage this whole thing with five bolts, but especially these, which are really robust inside the, the transmission there. I think that that will fix most of our problems. And then also the way that we're gonna mount it off the sides are gonna be such that we can slide some bolts out and drop the transmission right out the bottom of the, uh, the cradle. So let's go ahead, take some measurements off of this, and then we'll get on the Fusion 360, start making this plate up and, uh, and fabricate this thing. Well, I'm not exactly sure why, but for some reason, the recording of the Fusion 360 that I did for this didn't record. So anyway, so this is me using the Langmuir Systems Crossfire XR to cut 11 gauge or about eighth inch steel uh, which I use for a lot of the stuff on my truck. And if you're interested in the settings that I use, I'm using about 90 inches per minute. I do a lead in at about uh, 80 inches per minute. Then a lead out, I pick about 120. I use my entry, entry radius is 0 0.05. And then I think I have a 0.2 as far as the lead in distance and also lead out distance. And that seems to be giving me the best results as far as like the quality of the holes that I have in there with the least amount of marks and those kinds of things, which is always a challenge when you're doing these things. But uh, it does a really good job of cutting this thing out. And later on, you're gonna see me cutting 3 16 which I think you'll be totally impressed by. But once I'm done with this, you know, I just, I hit everything with my belt sander real quick. This thing has been awesome. Uh, and then I drop it into my Swag Off-Road Press Brake. And this thing, again, another tool, doesn't cost you very much. I think if you look at my Amazon page, you'll find this thing. You get the press from Harbor Freight, a great company. Uh, it's a 20-ton press, and then you can bend you know, up to a quarter-inch plate steel in this press brake that they make, and it is, it is super cool. And I make a lot of parts of that, and I think it just uh, does a really good job. All right, this gives you a good idea how everything is gonna fit up here. We got this plate, it engages those three bolts like we talked about. A couple little holes in there, I can rosette weld to this tube. 
and this is just mocking it up in there to show that it will fit in there. It took a little bit of bending to make this one flush with this one, but that was pretty easy to do, just using my, uh, my table to kind of clamp this down and bend it back and forth to make it mesh perfectly with this. Um, but now what we're going to do is make this thing, it's going to be probably about two feet wide, and we're going to be putting some uh, bushings on the end of that to make, a, make the mount. So let's go ahead and get to that part. Okay, let's take a look at some of the considerations here for the mount I'm going to make for the transmission here in the back. And some of the things I need to work around or just make my life a little bit easier. First off, is just the way the exhaust is going to flow. It's going to come out of here. Somewhere in here will be the O2 sensor. It'll go through this little flex joint, and then it'll be the, the exhaust will be hard mounted from here all the way out the back. I don't know how it's going to exit out the back. It'll probably turn up and then kind of kick out the back. but. Uh, what I want to do is I want this thing to kind of be always splitting the difference between the transmission and my butt over here. So it'll be uh, kind of diverging out towards the, uh, the side as, as the exhaust goes out. So what we'll do is the two by two will come right across here and it'll probably mount somewhere about right here such that I can unbolt it easily, drop the transmission straight out the back without hitting the mounts. But I also want whatever mounts I'm going to put over here I want those mounts to have at least two holes in there such that I can have whatever bracket I use for the exhaust, I want it to bolt to that mount also. So that mount can have serve two purposes uh, there. So that's what we'll do right now is we're gonna go ahead and get onto Fusion 360. Again, back to the Crossfire XR. We're gonna cut out the mounts for the transmission. Well, I'm seriously having some audio visual issues here because I recorded this whole thing and for some reason the audio is missing. So I apologize. I, but usually on my videos, this is what I do. I take, uh, I go through Fusion 360 and I, I try to make it simple so that people can kind of follow along and understand if you're trying to do this thing your first time. So even if you watch some of my videos for the first time, you look at it and go like, ah, I could do that. That isn't as difficult as I thought it would be. And Fusion 360, I think is an amazing tool and it pairs up just so well with all the Langmuir Systems products. I, you know, their, their tables, the Crossfire Pro, the Crossfire XR, and I got a feeling that the, cross, that the MR, their new milling machine, is going to be just as good. But So here I am using the Crossfire XR again. I want you to pay close attention to just the quality of the holes. This thing cuts through 3 16 especially all of them, everything pretty well, but I always find that 3 16 just cuts really nicely with these things. And it's a really tight uh, cut with very little dross on their side. It comes off with just a fingernail. If you're interested in adding a Crossfire XR or a Pro to your um, garage, check out that I have a video where I compare the two. And if you use code NTD Racing, you'll get $100 off on an order of one of those. And it definitely helps us out. And I can't say thank you enough for the people who have ordered one uh, using our code. All right, as far as welding goes, I'm not gonna to try to get anybody in instruction. I'll just tell you what I do though. So I'm basically gonna do two different kind of welding techniques here and I'll tell you why I like both. The first one I'm doing is I'm actually pulsing the pedal with my foot. So every time you hear the 
the water go wah, 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 wah. That's actually me pushing down and releasing my foot. And the benefit of this is that it helps me control the speed. Let's say, for example, I push down, I, I'm, I'm welding, I come back up, and then my hand is in exactly the right position. Well, I can pause with my foot up, make sure I get the, the filler rod just right in the right place before I put it back in, and it just helps me control the speed. Another thing I'm doing here is I do not ever weld with a bad tungsten. I keep about 30 sharp tungstens in that little jar you see right there. And as soon as I see it go bad, I see the color change in my helmet or just the welds kind of losing control, I immediately change the tungsten. I keep those things sharp. And I just go through and sharpen them all at one time. So the second one I'm going to do, I think it's a little bit more difficult. This is where you really got to practice working your, in my case, the left hand with the filler rod. So I'm just going to pedal down, and then I'm just going to try and control the temperature of the weld by my rate I go across and also how quickly I'm feeding in that filler rod. And this is a little bit more tricky than, I think, pulsing with your foot. So if I had my choices, and it's something I didn't learn until later, I would try to learn that rhythm of pulsing with your foot. It really works out well. All right, we have this thing all mocked together. Let's take a look at it. First off, you can tell it isn't quite welded all the way in just yet. I am waiting to do all the welding on these until I'm ready on the front and the back at the same time. That'll be soon and I will show you that. I got those bushings put in there, it's all spaced out. And the benefit of this whole build now is I just you know, basically unbolt the bell housing take the uh, slip yoke out. And now once I undo these bolts, I can drop this the transmission straight out the bottom. Whereas before we were having to pull the transmission and the engine out at the same time. And it seems like we go through transmissions faster than we go through engines. So this will save us a lot of time with cooling and all that kind of stuff. So up next is, you know, getting these things welded in, getting this plate back here welded to this tube, which really is gonna lock everything in. I think do a good job of uh, making this a lot more robust. And, uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to getting this thing out there in the truck. <laughs> I'm working to get the truck done, but it will be soon, at least at some point. Can't wait to have this thing out in the Baja Desert. This thing's going to be awesome. All right. Well, so far, so good. You know, it's really these, like, taking care of these little tasks along the way, getting the engine mounts in, getting the plumbing done. You know you got to do it at some point anyway, and it's just easier at this phase, at least in my build, to get those things done. I already know that the chassis is going to go together perfect with all those tubes that we cut from Bentec and they've already been fitting together perfect. So that's what we're getting to next. We're going to continue getting the roll cage together and we're going to also start working on the front suspension, those upper lower A arms and the really complex steering system that I'm going to get for about 30 bucks. And I'll show you how I do all those things in the future episodes. I hope you will join us for those. Maybe ringing the bell for notification of future episodes. It always helps us out when you Give us a like or a comment, and we sure do appreciate those things. I can't wait to see you next week. Take care of yourself.